Star Trek – Voyager is an American science fiction television series created by Rick Berman, Michael Piller, and Jerry Taylor. It originally aired between January 16, 1995 and May 23, 2001 on UPN, lasting for 172 episodes over seven seasons. The fifth series in the Star Trek franchise, it served as the fourth sequel to Star Trek, the original series. Set in the 24th century, when Earth is part of a united federation of planets, it follows the adventures of the Starfleet vessel USS Voyager, as it attempts to return home after being stranded in the Delta Quadrant on the far side of the Milky Way galaxy. Paramount Pictures commissioned the series following the termination of Star Trek, the next generation to accompany their ongoing Star Trek, Deep Space Nine. They wanted it to help launch their new network, UPN. Berman, Piller, and Taylor devised the series to chronologically overlap with Deep Space Nine and to continue themes, namely the complex relationship between Starfleet and ex-Federation colonists known as the Maquis, which had been introduced in The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. Voyager was the first Star Trek series to include CGI technology for space scenes and the first to feature a female captain, Catherine Janeway, Kate Mulgrew, as the lead character. Berman served as head executive producer in charge of the overall production, assisted by a series of executive producers, Piller, Taylor, Brannon Braga, and Kenneth Biller. Being set in a different part of the galaxy to preceding Star Trek shows, Voyager gave the series writers space to introduce new alien species as recurring characters, namely the Kazan, Vedians, Hirogen, and Species 8472. During the later seasons, the Borg, a species created for the next generation, were introduced as the main antagonists. During Voyager's run, various episode novelizations and tie-in video games were produced. After the show ended, various novels continued the crew's adventures. Topic. Production As Star Trek, The Next Generation ended, Paramount Pictures wanted to continue to have a second Star Trek TV series to accompany Star Trek, Deep Space Nine. The studio also planned to start a new television network, and wanted the new series to help it succeed. This was reminiscent of Paramount's earlier plans to launch its own network by showcasing Star Trek, Phase 2 in 1977. Initial work on Star Trek, Voyager began in 1993, when the seventh and final season of Star Trek, The Next Generation and the second season of Star Trek, Deep Space Nine were in production. Seeds for Voyager's backstory, including the development of the Maquis, were placed in several The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine episodes. Voyager was shot on the stages The Next Generation had used, and where the Voyager pilot, Caretaker, was shot in September 1994. Costume designer Robert Blackman decided that the uniforms of Voyager's crew would be the same as those on Deep Space Nine. Star Trek – Voyager was the first Star Trek series to use computer-generated imagery CGI, rather than models, for exterior space shots. Babylon 5 and Sequest DSV had previously used CGI to avoid the expense of models, but the Star Trek television department continued using models because they felt they were more realistic. Amblin Imaging won an Emmy for Voyager's opening CGI title visuals, but the weekly episode exteriors were captured with hand-built miniatures of Voyager, its shuttlecraft, and other ships. This changed when Voyager went fully CGI for certain types of shots midway through Season 3 late 1996. Foundation Imaging was the studio responsible for special effects during Babylon 5's first three seasons. Season 3's The Swarm was the first episode to use Foundation's effects exclusively. Star Trek – Deep Space Nine began using Foundation Imaging in conjunction with Digital Muse in Season 6. In its later seasons, Voyager featured visual effects from Foundation Imaging and Digital Muse. The digital effects were produced at standard television resolution and some have speculated that it cannot be re-released in HD format without re-creating the special effects. However, Enterprise has been released in HD, but the special effects were rendered in 480p and upscaled. Topic. Plot overview <laughs> 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 
Topic Summary In the pilot episode, Caretaker, USS Voyager departs the Deep Space Nine space station on a mission into the treacherous Badlands. They are searching for a missing ship piloted by a team of Maquis rebels, which Voyager's security officer, the Vulcan Lieutenant Tuvok, has secretly infiltrated. While in the Badlands, Voyager is enveloped by a powerful energy wave that kills several of its crew, damages the ship, and strands it in the galaxy's Delta Quadrant, more than 70,000 light years from Earth. The wave was not a natural phenomenon. In fact, it was used by an alien entity known as the Caretaker to pull Voyager into the Delta Quadrant. The Caretaker is responsible for the continued care of the Ocampa, a race of aliens native to the Delta Quadrant, and has been abducting other species from around the galaxy in an effort to find a successor. The Maquis ship was also pulled into the Delta Quadrant, and eventually the two crews reluctantly agree to join forces after the Caretaker space station is destroyed in a pitched space battle with another local alien species, the Kazan. Chakotay, leader of the Maquis group, becomes Voyager's first officer. Balana Torres, a half-human, half-Klingon Maquis, becomes chief engineer. Tom Paris, whom Janeway released from a Federation prison to help find the Maquis ship, is made Voyager's helm officer. Due to the deaths of the ship's entire medical staff, the doctor, an emergency medical hologram designed only for short-term use, is employed as the ship's full-time chief medical officer. Delta Quadrant natives Neelix, a Talaxian scavenger, and Kess, a young Ocampa, are welcomed aboard as the ship's chef, morale officer and the doctor's medical assistant, respectively. Due to its great distance from Federation space, the Delta Quadrant is unexplored by Starfleet, and Voyager is truly going where no human has gone before. As they set out on their projected 75-year journey home, the crew passes through regions belonging to various species, the barbaric and belligerent Kazan, the organ-harvesting, disease-ravaged Vedians, the nomadic hunter race the Herogen, the fearsome species 8472 from fluidic space, and most notably the Borg, whose home is the Delta Quadrant, so that Voyager has to move through large areas of Borg-controlled space in later seasons. They also encounter perilous natural phenomena, a nebulous area called the Necrot Expanse. Fair Trade. Third season, a large area of empty space called the Void. Night. Fifth season, wormholes, dangerous nebulae and other anomalies. However, Voyager does not always deal with the unknown. It is the third Star Trek series to feature Q, an omnipotent alien. And the second on a recurring basis, as Q made only one appearance on Star Trek, Deep Space Nine. Starfleet Command learns of Voyager's survival when the crew discovers an ancient interstellar communications network, claimed by the Herogen, into which they can tap. This relay network is later disabled, but due to the efforts of Earth-based Lieutenant Reginald Barkley, Starfleet eventually establishes regular contact in the Season 6 episode, Pathfinder using a communications array and micro-wormhole technology. In the first two episodes of the show's fourth season, Kess leaves the ship in the wake of an extreme transformation of her mental abilities, while Seven of Nine, known colloquially as Seven, a Borg drone who was assimilated as a six-year-old human girl, is liberated from the collective and joins the Voyager crew. As the series progresses, Seven begins to regain her humanity with the ongoing help of Captain Janeway, who shows her that emotions, friendship, love, and caring are more important than the sterile perfection the Borg espouse. The Doctor also becomes more human-like, due in part to a mobile hollow emitter the crew obtains in the third season which allows the Doctor to leave the confines of sickbay. He discovers his love of music and art, which he demonstrates in the episode Virtuoso. In the sixth season, the crew discovers a group of adolescent aliens assimilated by the Borg, but prematurely released from their maturation chambers due to a malfunction on their Borg cube. As he did with Seven of Nine, the Doctor rehumanizes the children, Azan, Rebi and Mezati, three of them eventually find a new adoptive home while the fourth, Icheb, chooses to stay aboard Voyager. Life for the Voyager crew evolves during their long journey. Traitors Seska and Michael Jonas are uncovered in the early months. State of flux. Investigations. Loyal crew members are lost late in the journey, and other wayward Starfleet officers are integrated into the crew. 
In the second season, the first child is born aboard the ship to Ensign Samantha Wildman. As she grows up, Naomi Wildman becomes great friends with her godfather, Neelix, and develops an unexpected and close relationship with Seven of Nine. Early in the seventh season, Tom Paris and Bellana Torres marry after a long courtship, and Torres gives birth to their child, Miral Paris, in the series finale. Late in the seventh season, the crew finds a colony of Talaxians on a makeshift settlement in an asteroid field, and Neelix chooses to bid Voyager farewell and live once again among his people. Over the course of the series, the Voyager crew finds various ways to reduce their 75-year journey by five decades, shortcuts, in the episodes, Night, and Q2, technology boosts, in episodes, The Voyager Conspiracy, Dark Frontier, Timeless, and Hope and Fear, subspace corridors in Dragon's Teeth, and a mind-powered push from a powerful former shipmate in The Gift. Also, the crew is not able to use other trip-shortening opportunities, as seen in the episodes Prime Factors, Future's End, Eye of the Needle, and Inside Man. A technical enhancement that will reduce their return to a two-year journey is found, but only by a duplicate crew in the episode, Course, Oblivion, with this crew dying shortly before finding a way to communicate what they have learned to the real Voyager. After traveling for seven years, the remainder of the journey is shortened to a few minutes, when Voyager is able to access a Borg transwarp conduit in the series finale, Endgame. Topic. Historical stories In the episode, 1159, first aired on May 5, 1999, the Millennium Tower is built in Indiana starting in the year 2000. Captain Janeway enlists Seven of Nine to research her family history from the 21st century to learn more about Shannon O'Donnell, Janeway's hero and inspiration to explore space. The story that the captain has been told was that one of her ancestors had built the Millennium Tower, and that she was also one of the original female astronauts to visit Mars. Seven and Neelix discovers that the captain's aunt had the details of O'Donnell's life wrong. <laughs> Topic. Altered timelines The original future is changed when Admiral Janeway alters her original timeline and reduces the journey to seven years in the season finale, and one depicted in Relativity. Topic. Return voyage Voyager's journey home was essentially a trek across a large fraction of the Milky Way. The estimated approximately 75-year-long duration of the voyage was reduced by several large jumps in distance that occurred in several episodes. A number of alternative timelines were explored due to the introduction of races possessing the ability to time travel such as in Timeless. One such timeline involves the death of the entire crew with only Chakotay, Harry and the Doctor surviving one flaw in the timeline to be noted might also be Season 3 Episode 21, Before and After, when Kess informs CPT. Janeway to avoid the Krenum and of the phase variants of their torpedoes but Captain Janeway fails to acknowledge this important tidbit of future events in Season 4 Episodes 8 and 9 Year of Hell. Only by altering the past does Voyager continue. Its tele-theater and the flexibility of the science fiction universe created by generations of Star Trek writers and production staff accommodate this and more, with the theatrical devices forming a palette of plot tools. The use of Borg technology in the final episode allowed Voyager to return home after a journey of only seven years. Events that shortened Voyager's travel time home. Ten years closer. The gift. About two years closer. Night. Ten years closer. Timeless. Fifteen years closer. Dark Frontier. Three years closer. The Voyager Conspiracy. Nineteen years closer. Q2. These jumps decreased the time needed to return by approximately 59 years. Counting elapsed time, by the end of the seventh and final season, assuming one year elapsed per season, Voyager was 35 years travel from Federation space. 
remaining distance after seven years of travel. Endgame. Topic: <inaudible> Body count. Although meant as a way of saving the Ocampa, the caretaker's abduction caused the death of many of the Voyager Starfleet crew, including some very critical roles, including first officer, chief engineer, and medical staff. This creates a labor shortage that has to be filled in various ways, in particular the Maquis crew, who lost their ship, are able to fill some of the highest ranking positions including first officer and chief engineer. Voyager successfully recovers Tuvok, who was working as a spy, and he is also able to join the crew. However, over the course of the next seven years according to the theatrically exposed timeline over 40 crew are killed. Sources of new crew members included taking on the Maquis crew, aliens, and other sources. The number of on-screen actors does not exceed the amount of possible crew over the course of the seven seasons. Topic. Relationships The series depicts a crew stuck together for a long time and far from home, so personal attraction transcends Starfleet ranks between some officers. Over the series, characters were depicted having romantic encounters ranging from encounters with aliens, other crew members, and holograms. An example of this is when Tuvok has a sexual encounter with a hologram of his wife when hit with the Vulcan species Pon Far experience. Voyager had a distinct narrative of relationships, with episodes touching marriage proposals, pregnancies, and the struggle of children dealing with various parental issues, including failed marriages. Another example from the series is when Seven of Nine sexually propositions Harry Kim, instructing him to strip naked. The series explores relationships and friendships between the characters in general, especially resolving tension over events and the interplay between events in a person's life and how those events impact a friendship in a crew setting. Examples of episodes that explore two characters, friendship or romance, or interactions. Topic. Cast Genevieve Bujold was cast as Janeway, but quit a day and a half into shooting the pilot, Caretaker, and was replaced by Kate Mulgrew. Topic. Notable guest appearances The show's many visitations across time and space provide a range of performances ranging from cameos to almost being interwoven into much of the show, such as when being portrayed as a love interest or protagonist of one the show's regulars. Topic. Cameos Prince Abdullah of Jordan now King, played an unnamed ensign science officer in the episode Investigations. Musician Tom Morello played crewman Mitchell, seen when Captain Janeway asks him for directions on Deck 15, in Good Shepherd. Topic. Actors Source material Jason Alexander played Carose, the spokesperson for a group of alien scholars, in Think Tank. Ed Begley Jr. portrayed Henry Starling, an unscrupulous 20th-century industrialist, in Future's End, Parts 1 and 2. Robert Curtis Brown portrayed Nizar, the Ladosian ambassador, in Natural Law. David Clennon played Dr. Krell Massette in the episode Nothing Human. The episode was tailored to Clennon's stance against torture, in that Massette tortured people to find a cure for a disease. Henry Darrow playing Chakotay's father in the episodes, Tattoo, and Basics, Part 1. Andy Dick plays the emergency medical hologram Mark II on USS Prometheus in, Message in a Bottle. David Graff appeared as Fred Noonan, Amelia Earhart's navigator in the episode, The 37s. Gary Graham, who portrayed Ambassador Sovel on Star Trek, Enterprise, played Ocampan community leader Tannis in the season 2 episode, Cold Fire. Jarrett Graham, who played A.Q. Quinn in, Death Wish, 
who sought asylum on Voyager as he wanted to leave the Q continuum so he could end his life. Joel Grey played Calum, a delusional widower who believes Janeway as his daughter, in Resistance. Lori Hallier played Riley Frazier, one of a group of former Borg drones, in Unity. Dwayne, The Rock. Johnson portrayed the Pendari champion when Seven of Nine and Tuvok were captured and forced to play in the game, in the episode, Sunkot C. Alice Cridge played the Borg Queen in the movie Star Trek – First Contact, trying to assimilate Earth shortly before the first warp flight, before she and her collective were destroyed. She reprised her role as the Borg Queen in the series finale, Endgame, where she is also destroyed by a virus. Sharon Lawrence played the famous aviator Amelia Earhart in the episode, The 37s. Michael McKean plays a maniacal clown character in a simulation in which the crew's minds are held hostage in the episode, The Thaw. Virginia Madsen played Kellen, a Ramuran tracer, in Unforgettable. Marjorie Monaghan played Freya, a shield maiden, in Heroes and Demons. John Savage plays Captain Rudolph Ransom of the USS Equinox, another Federation starship that Voyager encountered in the Delta Quadrant, in Equinox, Parts 1 and 2. Lori Petty played Nos in the episode, Gravity. Tuvok and Tom become stranded on a planet and befriend Nos, an alien stranded there many years before. John Rhys Davies plays Leonardo da Vinci in Janeway's holodeck program. He appeared in Scorpion, Part 1, and Concerning Flight. Sarah Silverman appeared as Rain Robinson, a young astronomer who finds Voyager in orbit of 20th century Earth, in Future's End, Parts 1 and 2. Kurtwood Smith, who played the Federation president in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, played Anorax, a Krenum scientist who was determined to restore his original timeline, in Year of Hell, Parts 1 and 2. Comedian Scott Thompson played the alien Tommen in Someone to Watch Over Me. Susanna Thompson, who played the Borg Queen in Dark Frontier, Parts 1 and 2 and Unimatrix Zero, Parts 1 and 2. Ray Walston, who appeared as Starfleet Academy groundskeeper Boothby in the Star Trek, the Next Generation episode, The First Duty, reprised the role in the episodes In the Flesh and the Fight. Songwriter Paul Williams played Prelate Koru in Virtuoso. Titus Welliver played Lieutenant Maxwell Burke in Equinox, Parts 1 and 2. Tom Wright, who appeared as Tuvix in Tuvix. Ray Wise played Artoris in Hope and Fear. He also had an appearance in an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation called Who Watches the Watchers? Dan Butler played Steth in Vis A Vis. Topic: Connections with other Star Trek incarnations. Topic: Characters and races. As with other Star Trek series, the original Star Trek's Vulcans, Klingons, and Romulans appear in Star Trek – Voyager. Voyager had appearances by several other races who initially appear in the next generation, the Q, the Borg, Kardashians, Bajorans, Betazoids, and Ferengi, along with Deep Space Nine's Jemadar via hologram, as well as the Maquis Resistance Movement, previously established in episodes of The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. One notable connection between Voyager and The Next Generation appears regarding a wormhole and the Ferengi. In The Next Generation Season 3 episode, the price. Bidding takes place for rights to a wormhole. The Ferengi send a delegation to the bidding. When the Enterprise and Ferengi vessel each send shuttles into the wormhole, they appear in the Delta Quadrant, where the Ferengi shuttle becomes trapped. In the Voyager Season 3 episode, False Prophets, the Ferengi who were trapped have since landed on a nearby planet, and begun exploiting the inhabitants for profit. Topic. Actors from other Star Trek incarnations appearing on Voyager 
In some cases, the actors play the same character as elsewhere, such as Dwight Schultz who plays Reginald Barkley. In other cases, the same actors play different characters. Michael Ansara is one of seven actors to play the same character in his case the Klingon Commander Kong on three different Star Trek TV series. The original series, Day of the Dove, Deep Space Nine, Blood Oath, and Voyager, Flashback. Von Armstrong, who portrayed a wide variety of guest characters throughout the show's run, later went on to portray Admiral Forrest in Star Trek, Enterprise. Majel Barrett voices the ship's computer, having performed the same role in previous Star Trek series. LeVar Burton, who played Geordi LaForge on The Next Generation, appeared as Captain LaForge of USS Challenger in an alternate future in the episode, Timeless. Jeffrey Combs, Weyown and Brunt of Deep Space Nine and Shran of Enterprise, appeared in, Soon Caught Sea, as Norcadian Penk. Leonard Crowfoot, who appears in, Virtuoso, as a Komar spectator, acted in the Next Generation episode, Angel One, and as the prototype version of Data's daughter Lol in the Next Generation episode, The Offspring. John Delancey plays the mischievous Q, who also annoyed Captain Jean-Luc Picard on The Enterprise and Commander Benjamin Sisko on Deep Space Nine in the Deep Space Nine episode, Q-less. He appeared in, Death Wish. The Q and the Grey, and Q2. Aaron Eisenberg, Nog of Deep Space Nine, appeared in Initiations as a Kazan adolescent named Carr. Jonathan Frakes played Commander William Riker from The Next Generation, appearing in Death Wish. Jarrett Graham, who played the hunter in a Deep Space Nine episode called Captive Pursuit, and later played A Q Quinn in the Voyager episode. Death Wish. J. G. Herzler, Martok of Deep Space Nine and Klingon Advocate Kolos in the Enterprise episode, Judgment, appeared in Sunkot C as an unnamed Herogen. Alice Cridge, who played the Borg Queen in the TNG movie Star Trek First Contact, reprised the role for the Voyager series finale, Endgame. Susanna Thompson played the Borg Queen in the Voyager double episodes. Unimatrix Zero, and Dark Frontier. Susie Plaxen, who portrayed Dr. Seller in the Next Generation episode The Schizoid Man, as well as Ambassador Calaire, Worf's maid in The Emissary, and Reunion, appeared as the female Q in the episode The Q and the Grey. Joseph Ruskin played a Vulcan master in the episode Gravity. Ruskin also played Galt in the Star Trek original series episode, Gamesters of Triskelion, the Klingon Tumek Deep Space Nine episodes, House of Quark, and Looking for Parmok in All the Wrong Places, a Cardassian's informant in the Deep Space Nine episode, Improbable Cause, and a Sulaban doctor in the Enterprise episode, Broken Bow. Dwight Schultz played Reginald Barkley on Star Trek The Next Generation and in the film Star Trek First Contact. He appeared in the following Voyager episodes Projections, Pathfinder, Life Line, Inside Man, Author, Author, and Endgame. Mark Allen Shepard also appears uncredited as Morn, alongside Quark in the pilot. Armin Scheimerman, who portrayed Quark on Deep Space Nine, appeared in the pilot, Caretaker. Dan Shore, who appeared as the Ferengi Dr. Eridor in the Next Generation episode, The Price, reprised the role in Voyager episode, False Prophets, having become stranded in the Delta Quadrant at the end of the Next Generation episode. Marina Sirtis, as Counselor Deanna Troy from The Next Generation, appears in, Pathfinder. Lifeline and Inside Man. James Sloyan played portrayed Alidar Jarek, a defecting Romulan admiral, in The Defector, and Alexander Rojenko, Worf's son, as an adult in the future in Firstborn, both Star Trek: The Next Generation episodes. In Star Trek: Deep Space Nine, he portrayed the Bajoran scientist Mora Pole and Odo's father in the episodes The Begotten and the alternate. 
The Star Trek – Voyager episode entitled, Jatrell, featured Sloyan as the title character. Kurtwood Smith, who plays Anorax in, Year of Hell, appeared in Star Trek – Deep Space Nine episode, Things Past, as a Cardassian's, Thrax. Before this, he also appeared in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country as the President of the Federation. George Takei from the original series reprised his role as Hikaru Sulu, who became captain of USS Excelsior in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. He appeared in Voyager episode, Flashback, commemorating the 30th anniversary of Star Trek. Tony Todd, who played Worf's brother Kern in the Next Generation episodes, Sins of the Father, Redemption, Parts 1 and 2 and the Deep Space Nine episode, Sons of Moog. Also the adult Jake Sisko in the Deep Space Nine episode, The Visitor, played an unnamed Herogen in the Voyager episode, Prey. Gwyneth Walsh of the Next Generation and Generations appeared in Random Thoughts as Chief Examiner Namira. Grace Lee Whitney from Original Series reprised her role as Janice Rand in Voyager episode Flashback, commemorating the 30th anniversary of Star Trek. Topic: Actors from Voyager appearing on other Star Trek incarnations. Robert Duncan McNeil Paris appeared in Star Trek The Next Generation episode The First Duty as Starfleet cadet Nicholas Locarno. The character of Locarno was used as a template for Tom Paris. Kate Mulgrew appears again as Catherine Janeway, promoted to Vice Admiral, in the film Star Trek – Nemesis a year after Voyager ended its run. Ethan Phillips Neelix was featured in the Star Trek – The Next Generation episode, Menage a Troy, as the Ferengi Farek, the Star Trek – Enterprise episode, Acquisition. As the Ferengi pirate Ulysses, and in Star Trek, first contact as an unnamed Maitre D on the holodeck. Robert Picardo, the Doctor, guest starred in the Star Trek Deep Space Nine episode Doctor Bashir, I presume, as Doctor Louis Zimmerman and an EMH Mark I, and made a cameo appearance in the film Star Trek First Contact as the Enterprise E's EMH. Tim Russ Tuvok appeared in Star Trek The Next Generation episode. Starship Mine, the Star Trek Deep Space Nine episodes, Invasive Procedures, and Through the Looking Glass, as Mirror Tuvok, and the film Star Trek Generations, as various characters. Jerry Ryan is set to reprise her role of Seven of Nine in the upcoming Star Trek Picard. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Behind the Scenes. In August 2015, the main cast members except Jennifer Lean, who retired from acting in 2002, appeared together on stage in Las Vegas for the 20th anniversary of Star Trek Voyager at the 2015 Las Vegas Star Trek convention. Robert Duncan McNeil Paris and Roxanne Dawson Torres have also directed episodes of Star Trek Enterprise, while Jonathan Frakes, LeVar Burton, and Andrew Robinson, Garrick of Deep Space 9, all directed episodes of Star Trek Voyager. The sets used for USS Voyager were reused for the Deep Space Nine episode, Inter Arma Enum Silent Lages, for her sister ship USS Bellerophon NCC 74705, both of which are intrepid class starships. The sickbay set of USS Voyager was also used as the Enterprise E sickbay in the films Star Trek, First Contact and Star Trek, Insurrection. Additionally, the Voyager Ready Room and the engineering set were also used as rooms aboard the Enterprise E in Insurrection. Topic: List of episodes. The series consists of 172 episodes, all 45 minutes in length, excluding advertisement breaks. 4 episodes: Caretaker, Dark Frontier, Flesh and Blood, and Endgame, originally aired as 90-minute episodes, excluding advertisement breaks. In syndication, these four episodes are split into two episodes, 45 minutes in length. Topic: <laughs> Broadcast history. 
Star Trek – Voyager launched with UPN Network with repeats entering into syndication. The two-hour-long debut, Caretaker, was seen by 21.3 million people in January 1995. The series is also available for streaming in the United States on CBS All Access, Hulu, Prime Video, and Netflix. Topic. Distributions The series was released on DVD in 2004 and again in 2017. In addition to the episodes, the DVDs also include some extra videos related to the show. There was an extra bonus video with the DVD set from the store Best Buy in 2004. Voyager had releases of episodes on VHS format, such as a collector's set with a special display box for the tapes. By the 2010s, the episodes were made available on various streaming services including the owner's CBS All Access in 2016 Netflix made an agreement with CBS for worldwide distribution of all then-existing 727 Star Trek episodes including Voyager. Voyager has 172 episodes and has been reviewed as a binge watch, with the whole series taking about three months, as rate of two episodes per day on weekdays and three episodes per day on weekends. As of 2015 services known to carry the series include Netflix, Amazon Prime, Google Play, iTunes, and CBS.com. Star Trek, Voyager has not been remastered in high definition and there are no plans to do so, due to the costs of reassembling each episode from the film negatives and recreating visual effects. Topic. Music. Unlike The Next Generation, where composer Jerry Goldsmith's theme from Star Trek, the motion picture was reused, Goldsmith composed and conducted an entirely new main theme for Voyager. As done with The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, a soundtrack album of the series pilot episode, Caretaker, and a CD single containing three variations of the main theme were released by Crescendo Records in 1995 between seasons 1 and 2. In 2017, La La Land Records issued Star Trek Voyager Collection, Volume 1, a four disc limited edition release containing Goldsmith's theme music and tracks from Jay Chataway's Rise, Night, The Two Parter, Equinox, Pathfinder, Spirit Folk. The Haunting of Deck 12, Shattered, The Void, and the two-parter, Scorpion, Dennis McCarthy's, The 37s, The Two-Parter, Basics, The Q and the Gray, Concerning Flight, Tinker Tenor Doctor Spy, and the two-parters, Workforce, and Year of Hell, David Bell's, Dark Frontier, and Paul Bellargin's, Life Signs. Topic. Awards and nominations Voyager won 20 different awards and was nominated for 70. Topic. Novels and revival attempts A total of 26 numbered books were released during the series' original run from 1995 to 2001. They include novelizations of the first episode, Caretaker, The Escape, Violations, Ragnarok, and novelizations of the episodes, Flashback, Day of Honor, Equinox, and Endgame. Also, Unnumbered Books, which are still part of the series, were released, though not part of the official release. These novels consist of episode novelizations except for Caretaker, Mosaic a biography of Catherine Janeway, Pathways a novel in which the biography of various crew members, including all of the senior staff, is given, and The Nanotech War, a novel released in 2002, one year after the series finale. Topic. Book relaunch 
A series of novels focusing on the continuing adventures of Voyager following the television series finale was implemented in 2003, much as Pocket Books did with the Deep Space Nine relaunch novel series, which features stories placed after the finale of that show. In the relaunch, several characters are reassigned while others are promoted but stay aboard Voyager. These changes include Janeway's promotion to Admiral, Chakotay becoming captain of Voyager and breaking up with Seven of Nine, Tuvok leaving the ship to serve as tactical officer under William Riker, and Tom Paris's promotion to first officer on the Voyager. The series also introduces several new characters. The series began with Homecoming and the Farther Shore in 2003, a direct sequel to the series finale, Endgame. These were followed in 2004 by Spirit Walk, Old Wounds and Spirit Walk, Enemy of My Enemy. Under the direction of a new author, 2009 brought forth two more additions to the series, Full Circle and Unworthy. In 2011, another book by the same author called Children of the Storm was released. Other novels, some set during the relaunch period, others during the show's broadcast run, have been published. Topic. Video games Two video games based on the Voyager were released, Star Trek, Voyager, Elite Force for PC 2000 and PS2 2001 and the arcade game Star Trek, Voyager, the arcade game 2002. The PS2 game Star Trek, Encounters 2006 also features the ship and characters from the show. Voyager was a graphic adventure video game developed by Looking Glass Technologies but it was cancelled in 1997. Topic. Cultural influence Voyager is notable for being the most gender-balanced Star Trek series with the first female lead character and strong female supporting characters, with a review of the different series giving Voyager the highest Bechtel test rating. In an article about Voyager, Ian Gray wrote, It was a rare heavy hardware science fiction fantasy not built around a strong man, and more audaciously, it didn't seem to trouble itself over how fans would receive this. On Voyager, female authority was assumed and unquestioned, women conveyed sexual power without shame and anger without guilt. Even more so than Buffy, which debuted two years later, it was the most feminist show in American TV history. About her years on Voyager, Kate Mulgrew said, the best thing was simply the privilege and the challenge of being able to take a shot at the first female captain, transcending stereotypes that I was very familiar with. I was able to do that in front of millions of viewers. That was a remarkable experience. And it continues to resonate. Topic. Reception In 2016, in a listing that included each Star Trek film and TV series separately, Voyager was ranked sixth by the LA Times. In 2017, Vulture ranked Star Trek, Voyager the fourth best live action Star Trek television show, prior to Star Trek Discovery. In 2019, Nerdist ranked this show the fifth best Star Trek series, in between Enterprise and Star Trek Discovery. Also in 2019, Moviephone ranked it the fifth best live action Star Trek series. In 2019, CBR ranked season 5 the fourth best season of a Star Trek show, and season 4, the eighth best. In 2019, Popular Mechanics ranked Star Trek Voyager the 36th best science fiction television show ever. <laughs>